Hello and welcome back to another web development video. Today I want to talk about junior developer portfolios, um, specifically for web dev, uh, but essentially your first developer portfolio that you want to build, uh, how to make it, things you should definitely do, a few things that you shouldn't do, but essentially um, that first dev portfolio that you're going to build when you're trying to get your first web developer job. Uh, I'll hop right into it here. So the very first thing that you want to do is make sure that it's mobile friendly. Uh, I have seen this on several uh, junior dev portfolios, um, specifically for people that are trying to switch industries and also for people that maybe haven't completed a boot camp or just trying to learn on their own. They don't make sure that it's mobile friendly. So what do I mean by that? If you're not totally familiar, um, it needs to be responsive. So if you have some items in your layout, such as navigation and some pictures and maybe some links on the side and then some uh, maybe some modals or some pop outs farther down the page, some content, all that stuff needs to look good on a small mobile screen. So when you go from a desktop size to a mobile size, that everything looks great. And the reason you need to do that is one, most internet traffic, if you don't know, is now on mobile devices. Uh, and two, um, people that are looking at your portfolio on a mobile device will immediately notice that it's not mobile responsive. Uh, and uh, savvy hiring managers are definitely gonna look at that. So make sure it's mobile friendly, design it mobile first. That's what you should definitely be thinking about is how does this look good on mobile? Um, if you don't know, uh, I hopefully you do, but if you don't, um, if you're pretty new to learning code, um, or if you're just trying to figure out that first portfolio site, you can, uh, use your Chrome, uh, inspect tools. Uh, and I, I won't go into how to do it, but you can use your Chrome inspect tools to look at things in mobile review. If you go to responsive and then, uh, then from there you can pick like, uh, uh, let's see, there's like iPhone five, six, seven, eight, there's iPhone X. You can look at Google pixels. Um, all that stuff you can use that emulator. Anyways, Google that if you, if you um, aren't familiar with how to do that. That's really helpful. It'll help you out a lot. Okay, next thing. Make sure you include the links uh, to all of your projects. Uh, make sure that they're live projects. So if you're building that portfolio and it's, hey, I'm Sam Dev and please hire me for my first job. I really love to, I really love Dev. I want to be hired. Um, I need to have a, a link out to whatever I built and that should be live. Um, you want at least one good live project. Uh, a live project, preferably something with a framework like React or Angular or Ruby on Rails, something that's that you've gone out and deployed. Uh, doesn't have to be super complicated, but just that you've gone to the effort to go through and build an entire application that does, doesn't matter what it does, it should be a simple to-do app, but you've got that live on the web. And there's a ton of tutorials out there. There's no reason you shouldn't do it. Uh, to get your own live project out there. So make sure that you have links in your portfolio out to those live projects. Or you can also have pages in your site with their own separate live projects. So if you're doing web dev, there's no reason for you to not have uh, page two of your site that has a bunch of you know buttons that click and do things. Um, it can be all sorts of simple things, maybe with jQuery to use something it's a little bit older, but it doesn't matter. The, the point is, is you have live projects for them to look at. And you don't have to have every single project you've ever done. You don't have to have it live. Uh, I've heard, you know, two or three or four is probably good enough. You should probably have more than two. But to have, you know, a decent amount out there, they're probably not going to look through all of them, but you want to be proud of them. Um, or you could also have, uh, this is something I did on mine, you could have modals with video snippets of the project. Um, that makes a lot of sense. If you've built, like I had, if you built uh, five or six different uh, Angular projects that are all fairly similar, but you don't want to spend a bunch of money hosting them, you can usually get one hosted for free somewhere, right? AWS, you can look into it. It changes all the time, but you can get something out there list, hosted for free. You can get a live free project going. But if you got six or seven of those, that's going to start adding up. Um, quite a bit. And if you don't want to do that, you don't, you don't have to. You just have the one live free one. You can have videos, uh, captures, GIFs capture, captures of those projects out there. That's more than enough so they can look at them and they can then go into the code and see, oh, that's how you did these things. You got it up and running at some point, even if it's just on your local host. If you took a, a, a video capture of that and put it on your site, that'll be more than enough if, if you have that in addition to some live projects. So definitely do that. Um, next thing. Be okay with integrating code snippets or CSS frameworks 
into your site. In fact, I would encourage that. So instead of custom building your entire site from your entire portfolio site all by hand, which I've seen a ton of people do, it's really hard, especially if you're junior, if it's your first real portfolio site you built, it's really, really hard to make that responsive and make it look really good. You'll spend a ton of time fiddling with that and, and maybe you can get it right. I, me personally, I, I probably was, uh, I was probably 40, 50 hours into just trying to get the response enough to work for some of the elements on there. I just couldn't get it. And, and that's okay. I, I was junior dev, not a big deal. I was trying to get my first job. But the point being is once I realized that, hey, I should integrate some CSS snippets, I should integrate some boot, bootstrap uh, CSS framework elements into my site. That's how I finally got nice modals to pop up and to be responsive. That's finally how I, I realized like, oh, if I want all my pages to nicely re rearrange itself, that's, that's how I did it. And I highly encourage you to do the same thing because it's gonna show your potential employers that you know how to work with other people's code, you, that you know how to integrate snippets into your code. And that's really important. That's a lot of what you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking current features and integrating new stuff into them. You'll be looking at a code base, understanding how things work, what you need to change to do things. So that's really super important. So if you can do that, I highly encourage that. Look, it's going to show, right, <clears throat> that your site's going to look good. You're going to be able to integrate that live, that live code. So those are the two big main reasons you definitely want to do that. And, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out Bootstrap. You can download their templates for free. For a lot of cool stuff, you can do pop outs. You can they have nav bars. You can just grab a nav bar, dump that right in your site. It's going to look great. Play around with the responsiveness of it. It's going to look great. You definitely want to do that. I highly recommend that. Um, so yeah, you check out Bootstrap, CSS Tricks. Uh, I think Semantics one. There's a bunch of them out there. Um, all right, we'll move down on my list. So next thing, uh, you want to make sure that your URL, your site address, you want to make sure that it's readable and custom. You basically want you.com, your name.com. So when somebody goes to look at your portfolio site, if they click on your LinkedIn profile or they get your resume and they type it in, you want it to go to your name.com, not your name or something goofy or uh, I think GitHub has like a GitHub pages. That's okay if you if you're in that one direction, but Generally, if you can get that custom URL, it really shows what you're doing. It's, you want to get as, as, as professional as you possibly can, and that is ideal. You, you, your name, you at your name dot com, whatever that is. Um, and if you have a, a bit of a longer name, um, it's okay to shorten it. Maybe, maybe you just do you know your last name. Um, it's a little bit different name if you can get it. It doesn't have to be dot com either. You get all the there's a you know. Ton of different domains out there that you can get for that, but I, I'd highly recommend recommend doing that. Um, for me, my my full name is Salvatore Santa Maria, and if you put that into a URL, that's pretty long and it kind of reads weird. So that's something else I want to throw out there. If your name is really long, something to think about. Maybe don't do that. Maybe just you know, I go by Sam. Maybe I just go by Sam Santa Maria. Maybe that's my URL. Um, and then also make sure it doesn't spell anything weird. You always got to remember to think about stuff like that. If it's a uh, if you're going to buy an actual domain. And if you want to buy a domain, they're not too expensive. You can usually get uh, a name domain for, you know, you, yourname.com for, I think it's like 12 bucks or something like that. You can get it for a year. It's not too bad. Um, you could do some hosting stuff if you wanted to do that. I think, uh, I think it gets to GitHub. You can, if you can get your site hosted on GitHub and, ch and you can change your name on there. So it's not a GitHub. Uh, address you can do that for basically free but if you do it on some hosting platforms i think it's about 20 bucks a month or something like that it's not too bad it does add up out over time you know but it's okay you definitely want to do it okay next up you got to make sure that your code is clean especially uh the code that's in uh, all of your projects you know the ones that you're showing in portfolio if you have links to your github make sure that you have got this cleaned up as much as you possibly can don't have too many junky junky uh, comments in there, you know, saying, I think this works or bad intent indentation and stuff like that. And then also make sure that whatever code that you have your site hosted with, hosted on. So if you've made a custom page and you've integrated all these CSS um, frameworks and stuff like that, 
make sure that you've got that code cleaned up because people will go and they'll go look at it, especially if you're, especially if you're doing, they want to know what level are you at? How professional are you? How serious are you? So go in there and clean that up. Try to get rid of all the comments. Make sure indentation is great. Try to make sure that you've got good naming for things. Don't have, don't have, you know, var A, var B, var C, var, you know, don't have console log. I, does this work? Do that and then remove it. And then when it's live, just, just move that stuff out of the way. Okay. You know what I'm talking about. Be clean, be professional as possible as you can. People will look at that code. Okay. Next up, make sure that your resume is downloadable on that site. Make sure you have a link somewhere on there and that it links to wherever you have it. Uh, mine, I think I use a Google Drive link on there so anybody can just directly download my resume directly from my portfolio site and make it easy. They can definitely just go look at it. If they don't have a copy of it, if they come across it, it's right there. Okay, super easy, super simple. Definitely do that and test that link too. When you go and put it up there, make sure that it actually works. Speaking of links, make sure that you link out to everything that is important, like your LinkedIn, if you have a blog or a channel where you've done any work whatsoever, link uh, link to your GitHub. If you're applying for a development job, you better have a GitHub. I, I think you probably already aware of that. You don't have to be really good with Git. Um, go and just take a free, quick intro, 30 minute uh, YouTube course, something like that to kind of get figure out what it is if you don't know what it is, but definitely you're gonna to need to have GitHub if you're applying out there for jobs. But for that portfolio, make sure that you have links out to all those things. And that also means like your LinkedIn's gotta be cleaned up, your blog's gotta be good, um, whatever else you have, have linked out from there, just make sure it's professional, it's all linked in, all, all linked out, and make sure that when you've done that, that you're doing it professionally. You don't wanna have um, vacation pics, check out my vacation pics, whatever. You know, they're about me stuff, try to keep it professional, you can do, I like, I'm Sam, I like web development and hiking, but nobody's gonna read my three page essay about the one time I went to Paris and how much I love the food there. They don't they don't care about that. So make sure you keep it professional. Your employer, your potential employers will definitely appreciate that. Okay, that's something else I wanna talk about too. I'm gonna to loop back there. Something to think about in your site when you do it, make sure that it looks professional, so no crazy colors. Make sure that you have a picture, put a picture of yourself on your site. You know, obviously your LinkedIn, you know that you should have that on there, but make sure that uh, on your portfolio site, put a picture of yourself. Do that, make, put, make them realize that you are a person, you're not just some random person. Make sure it's a good picture, smiling, good hair. Don't, don't crop something out where you got somebody next to you and you've got half, half their face in the, in the shot. Don't do that, just have it nice and professional, smiling happy, clear, good shot of your face. You want to do that. Make sure that they can tell that you are a person, that this is me. I, I This is my site. I'm proud of it. I put my face on it. Don't try to hide your face on your site. That's going to definitely hurt you in your job search and it's definitely going to hurt your portfolio. So make sure you got all that stuff linked out. And then after you've got your site up and running, you got to QA it. You got to make sure that any link that you have works. You got to make sure that all of whatever, if you got pop-ups on there, if you have multiple pages, you gotta QA the whole thing top to bottom. So how, how I would do this, right? You gotta go to every single page first, check every single project that, that you have that's live, make sure they all work correctly, because if they find something, then it's probably the end of it, right? They're not gonna look at your portfolio site for long, right? They're gonna look at your portfolio site for 20 seconds, 30 seconds, they're gonna go through, okay, this is Sam, okay, there's his picture, okay, I, I, I've already got his resume, I don't need to download that, let's check his GitHub, okay, he has a valid GitHub, okay, let's scroll through here, oh, that project looks interesting, oh, cool, that project, oh, that project doesn't load. He might, I might just get cut right there. It's tough to say, but you're gone, so you gotta make sure that you QA, QA all that stuff. And when you're QAing, right, check all your links, you know, make sure make sure that, um, like I said, all your code looks good. Uh, and then make sure you check for typos. Maybe you're like me, you're not somebody that does a lot of uh, great writing. You're not much of a writer like I am. You've spent all this time working on your code. Don't let there be a misspelled word that makes you look silly or misspell your name or misappear or stuff like that. Make sure that you please, please check for typos. Do a good job QAing. It will definitely pay off. I know it's a headache. You may not want to do it, but you got to do it. Remember that your portfolio is part of your resume. So your resume, you don't want typos and mistakes. You don't want that in your portfolio either. Uh, and then lastly, try to get somebody to review it. Get some feedback on there. Um, you can probably 
get any web development or any developer friends that you have or acquaintances you have to look it over. Uh, there's also a lot of great places out there on Reddit, on Twitter, um, Stack Overflow. Although Stack Overflow, you might get a little heat on there, but there's a lot of places that you can get um, help with your code or uh, reviews of, of um, your projects or reviews of your portfolio. Don't be afraid to ask uh, and don't be afraid to take criticism on stuff. Uh, most of the time, people are just trying to help you get a little bit better. Uh, maybe they're not asking nicely, but um, don't be afraid to share, uh, especially with um, some of the helpful people out there in like 100 days of, uh, of 100 days of code crowd that are on Twitter and some uh, some of the great places on Reddit out there. So, anyways, if you like this video, please subscribe, and if not, I'll see you next time.